Okay. So, we need to keep this on top. Okay, so. Lecture 4 2 Modeling with transducers. We now develop both linear graph and state space models of systems that include transducers. Remember, transducers are the elements that convert energy among the different domains. Um, <coughs> it can al they can also uh, convert energy into different forms within a domain as well. We talked about the two different types, transformers and gyrators. Uh, linear graphs of two-port ideal transducer elements are drawn as shown in figure 4.1. So we can uh, draw them like as if they're two, so two edges, okay, so two, two uh, lines um, connecting four nodes. And we have transducers here on the left, or sorry, transformers, transformers, and then gyrator, gyrators on the, on the right. Um, so the only difference being that we have this uh, sort of, um, I guess, oval or rectangular shape uh, around the transformer. And uh, we have it crisscross on the gyrator, just to show what it is. Um, and sometimes we'll label that with like TF or GY, just to tell us a little bit more detail about the situation. Uh, once again, we use the sign convention that power into an element is positive. Often the branches are drawn toward ground nodes, uh, which are always different uh, when the transducer acts between different energy domains. So if over here you've got like electrical, and over here you've got mechanical, then if this goes to ground on each side, then these two grounds are different, right? This is zero voltage, this is zero velocity. Transducers may or may not be sufficiently modeled by ideal transducers. For instance, we may need to consider the moment of inertia associated with a gear. When this is the case, additional elements can be connected in parallel and series with the two-port elemental nodes. And we'll see an example of this uh, in, in a couple of lectures. Well, actually, in the next lecture. DC motors, another example, uh, are typically not modeled with an ideal transducer alone because the windings have both resistance and inductance. And I would say, additionally, the rotor has moment of inertia and the bearings have damping. So those are two ways that we'll modify it, and we'll talk about those actually later today. Uh, in the next lecture. So, state space modeling with transducers. So we, we've now talked about linear graph models with transducers. Um, just, you know, just a little blurb, not, not too much to it. And then uh, we will now talk about how to go to a state space model with transducers. So we present a method for constructing a state space model uh, of systems containing transducer elements. This procedure begins as before with the construction of the normal tree. The following rules must be respected. So, remember that how there used to be two rules, right? There used to be two rules. There can be no loops and every node must be connected. Those were the two rules before. Now we've got rules three and four. Of a transformer's two branches, exactly one is included. So that's the rule three. And of a gyrator's two branches, either or both or neither is included. Okay? So, so either, so I think I might have said that wrong. Either both or neither is included. So you have to, you have to either have both of them with the gyrator or neither of them with the gyrator. Form a normal tree with the following steps. So include all nodes. That was the same as before. Include all across variable sources, same as before. <laughs> Include as many as possible A-type elements, same as before, right? Nothing's changed. Four, include transducer branches. 
minimizing the number of T types in the tree. So this is a sort of a, a, a little bit of a tricky rule to follow because you don't know at this point how many T types you're going to have in the tree. That doesn't come until step six, right? So you have to choose one configuration. If you only have one transducer in your system, then you have two options, right? Um, so if it's a transformer, you have to choose one brand, <coughs> one. Uh, uh, oh, I use this. I use this terminology again. I don't. I shouldn't use this. This should be edge edges. The terminology used to be a little bit fuzzy, and now I'm trying to tighten it up. Uh, so an edge is, is, so in a graph you have nodes and you have edges. So edges are, these, are the lines that represent elements. Um, a branch is something that's in the normal tree, is, is an uh, edge that's in the normal tree. And so that's what we're trying to really like precisely use that term. Um, sometimes we loosely call uh, uh, edges branches, but that's not what we want to do. We want to keep it more precise than that. So, uh, <clears throat> so a tr transformer in your graph, uh, uh, you either have to choose one edge or the other edge to be in. Uh, and that's the same with this. This should be edges as well. Um, of, with the gyrator, you need to either have both edges in the normal tree or, uh, n or uh, neither of them. So there's two options. So if you've got four different transducers, then you have two to the four options in terms of configurations, right? And that's uh, a little bit messy. So what you do typically is you pick one, you see, and then you try to uh, see if you changed things, if you could add any more t-types to your normal tree or if you could reduce the number at all. So the idea is that you choose one that ends up, that results in the, uh, the, the fewest possible t-types in the tree. OK. And then we go back to our regular. So this is the, the interpolated one is four here, right? Four is a little bit new. And then the rest of them are the same. So then d-type and t-type. So you might have to go through this, guess the first time, and then uh, loop back up there and maybe try something different and see if you can minimize the number of t-types. It's an iterative process in general. <clears throat> Sometimes you can do this by inspection, if you will, but what you're really doing is firing off the rest of the rules and then looping back and thinking it through. So uh, the state and output equations can be derived as before, but with a single caveat that's different. So, so far, we just constructed the normal tree, which was like the first step of our state equation formulation, right? Now, we proceed as, as before with our state equation formulation, writing the elemental equations, the continuity equations, compatibility equations, but with the caveat that uh, each two-port element requires two elemental equations. So, and we already introduced that uh, in the last lecture, we said we have the, uh, um, for a two-port element, we've got two elemental equations that show up. So you just have to remember you have an extra elemental equation. That's the only, the only caveat with the rest of the procedure. Oh, I froze again. That's fun. Very flattering. Uh, very cool. So any questions on this procedure? Okay. Then let's 